In the summer of 2011, the Missouri River Basin entered a protracted flood fight. For the southern portion of that basin, flooding was nothing new, with several fights in the past five years. But one aspect of this flooding would be significantly different. What we have is a very hydraulically loaded system, and to put it in perspective, in 1993, uh, this particular levee system was uh, above flood stage 26 for only about 12 days before it eventually overtopped and breached. In 2010, it was uh, hydraulically loaded above uh, flood stage 26 for only one day, and right now we're at 30 days and counting. To stay on top of any changing conditions for the levees along the Missouri, the Kansas City District would need to use every tool available, even a pair of eyes in the sky. Starting in 2007, uh, we decided that if we could fly, we could get a better sense of what was going on. And it's since developed into a tool that we don't think we can do without anymore. The level of detail that it provides us on each of the levee systems and, and the ability to squelch rumors or to verify uh, levee overtoppings and levee breaches uh, uh, just contributes greatly. For more than just aerial surveillance, the Kansas City team wanted a single person consistently in the air, day after day, looking at the levees. Consistency is important. If you had someone different every day, or say you had somebody change out every week, uh, would you really know if the situation has changed? Is that sand boil active? Was it active last week? Was it active last month? Is that seepage more? Is it less? It has that um, slump there in the slope, has it changed? Has it gotten lower? Uh, has, the has the river come up or down? Are the animal burrows, the ones that I'm seeing open today, were they other ones filled and these are new ones? Consistency is probably the biggest key to success, I think. An aerial perspective on the levees, the river, and seepage allowed several issues to be identified that might otherwise have slipped by unnoticed until they developed into a more serious problem. But the dynamic view would not simply be for Abbott's eyes alone. Early on, she set up a process to get members of the technical teams for the levees involved. We go ahead and get those guys who have been uh, monitoring the levee system on the ground and we take them up with us. And we go ahead and we'll fly the entire levee unit. And usually that'll take anywhere from five to 20 minutes, perhaps. And so in that very brief period of time, they're able to see what we can see. The pilots worked extensively with Abbott and other members of the aerial surveillance mission to provide the best views possible. They quickly became an extension of the mission themselves. Trying to put the aircraft in a position that the crew can see what they need to see. And then secondarily, I'll keep my eyes out too, as long as it, when it's safe to do so, I'll be looking as well. And a lot of times I'll see something on the right side of the aircraft that they might not see. Of course, aerial surveillance can only complement work accomplished on the ground, not replace it. Each perspective, whether in the ground or in the air, yields different information vital to the mission. Well, it provides us a great opportunity to be able to, to detect any kind of problems uh, that the systems may be having. It's been an instrumental tool in, in uh, finding sand boils out away from the levee, any other particular stress points on the levee, and, and it enables me to be able then to go back to my uh, non-federal uh, levee sponsorships, notify those folks and, and make them aware, because oftentimes you can't see a lot of the problems on the ground.